Howdy y'all, Dirty Carpenter here. I'd like to welcome you to a, another video. And I would also like to welcome all of our new subscribers. And for those of you that watch the videos and haven't subscribed yet, I ask you to do so and to hit the little bell so that you'll be notified when we, we post a video. Now I haven't been able to put a lot of videos out in the last few months. We've had some things going on in the family. And, and what I've been doing as I've been able to is sanding on the logs. I started up here first in the loft area. I've got all the logs sanded except for a few spots where I'll have to come back and do that. I've got the blocks on the inside and of course that's over the logs in that particular spot. So when I take the scaffold down I'll go back and hit those little spots here and there. I have the insulation board to put on the gables. I decided not to go ahead and put it up until I got these logs sanded and that would let the the wind and the air blow some of that dust out uh, through the gables. I've got these sanded and I've got the biggest part downstairs sanded. You can see the difference in the sanded logs against the logs that are not sanded. Now since I planed these logs when I worked them out they give me the option to do this to sand them back down and bring uh, the brightness back. Now you don't have to do this. You can leave them uh, the color that they will turn when they get a lot of rain. Of course, we've had a lot of rain in the last good many months, and they, they've darkened. I like to sand that surface off of there and, and bring them back to a lighter color. It seems like the older I get, the brighter I, things, I like things to be. I'm using a, it's actually a four and a half inch grinder, but I've got a seven inch disc on it, and it's got some backing to give it some support. Now this is a 36 grit disc. Now it's very, very aggressive. I normally would have a 50 grit on here, which it's a little easier to control. But with this uh, 36 grit, it cuts really, really quick. It takes this surface off and brings it back to the, the original, or really close to the original anyway. sanded and uh, I've got a few places in the corner that I want to touch up where I couldn't get in there with the, the grinder and the big disc on it and I'm using my actually this is just a, a, a multi-tool that uh, had some different attachments and it had this little corner sander attachment on it and I just got some sanding pads to put on there but I'm gonna uh, get into a corner here so that's got that uh, pretty well cleaned up. That'll look nice after the chinking goes in and the logs being brighter. Instead of the gray color, it uh, just kind of brings the life of the log back. I'm getting ready to uh, put the insulation board on this gable. Uh, this is the gable over B wall. I've already got the insulation over D wall, the other gable. I was going to show you how I go about doing this. Now, a lot of people do the same thing that I'm doing. What I've done, I've ripped some strips of tar paper. I'm going to put a strip of it wherever the four foot width of the insulation bore uh, lands. Uh, it will help keep out some air infiltration. And I also will put a piece up here going down the, the rake of the roof. I'll fold it over. All I'm doing is just folding that back on itself. And I'll put that right up here at the top and I'll staple that on all the way down and that will help somewhat at this point of air coming through uh, although I did use a v-edge tongue and groove for the decking and so I'll have that little v-edge uh, gap there that I will need to fill I'm going to go ahead and put this on and I'm just going to trim this where it's square with my little strip there just looking at it just by eyeball and then I'll set this up here and I'll just put some staples in it to hold it I'll just go down through there every so often and put a staple in and while I'm sitting here I'll take a just a flat piece let it unroll there I'm gonna cut a just my eye 45 degree angle on it and I'm just gonna center it on that gable stud I 
Okay, I've got another one folded to go down here at the bottom. It will kind of help some of that airflow that could come through there. The insulation board itself will set right on top of the uh, half log and the siding will actually come down over the half log and I'll, I'll put a water table there for that all to rest on. Okay, I've got the strips on there. I'm ready to go down and start cutting uh, the insulation board. I'll get a measurement right in the center because I'll start from the center and go either way because when I laid out the gable studs, that's the way I laid it out. And I'm gonna cut that about 76 and three quarters on the long point. I'm measuring up 76 and three quarters. This will be the long point. And I'll make it a little mark. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. 76 three quarters now my boards my insulation boards are 48 inches or four feet wide and since I'm using or I have a, a 12 12 pitch roof that would let me know if I multiply four feet or, or four on the width of the board here times 12 would be 48 inches or four feet so the angle that i will cut will be four feet less than my 76 and uh, three quarters so i could set my tape on four feet here and i'll make a mark right at the end of my tape just a little pencil mark then i can take my straight edge set it right on those marks and I'll scribe a line on that. Now this line right here will be what I cut. Now, I do have a window in here, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put the insulation board over it. I've got a temporary stud right here in the center of the window, and when I get ready to put the window in, I'll take it out and cut the insulation board out. But that'll have this blocked off up here until I get the window made and, and put in there. So I'm going to go ahead and get this tacked on. Now what I'm using, these are uh, an inch and three quarter ring shank a plastic cap nail. My insulation board is an inch thick, so this will get a good three quarter inch bite in the wood. Did anybody catch that I had this strip on the wrong stud? I think the heat's getting to me. I was able to get that insulation board on before the sun came over on this side. I have some red cedar that I will use to cover the gables up. This is some red cedar 1x12s that I was able to get. It's kind of unusual to be able to get a 12 inch board around here, but uh, the sawmill actually had some big logs and they were kind enough to saw them into 1x12s for me. I have also a stack of yellow pine that is a full two inches by eight inches, so it would be a rough sawed two by eight, and I've got them stacked and stickered, and I'm just air drying all of this lumber to use in the cabin. It's much cheaper for me to go to the sawmill and get what I need and just dry it than to go to the, to the lumber yard and pay the prices that we're having to pay now. But this will be used on the second floor. When it gets dry, I'll plane it all to one thickness and I'll tongue and groove this before I install it. At this point, I'm just waiting for it to dry. But with the hot temperatures that we're getting now, it should be well on its way to drying. And you can see I've got a lot of 
just scrap stuff stacked up on top of this. I'm not throwing anything away at all when it comes to scraps. I'll use it for something. I've got logs here for the next cabin. These have already been peeled and ready to go. We've got three different racks, well, maybe four, if you consider these three long ones that are sitting up on the sawhorses. So hang with us and I'll be taking you along to the new cabin site. Thank you for watching and God bless you.